The way the Dragon Ball Fighters community talks about Hit is truly perplexing to me. I've seen literally hundreds of people echo the statements, Hit has no mix, or Hit is trash. But many of the people I've spoken with or played with seem to be terrified of the idea of having to ever fight against him. I've never played a character before that has gotten so many people to rage quit on me, or at least refuse to rematch me. So what gives? Is he terrible? Is he godlike? The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. But the fact remains that most people don't seem to know much about what he does or how to fight against him, even if they claim to have an educated opinion about how terrible they believe he is. So let's fix that. If you want to learn him, then I've got you covered. Or if you just want to get better at fighting against him, then stick around. Let's start by briefly covering his pros and cons. It is a surprisingly simple character with simple strengths, and that's where most of his good and bad are going to come from. First, his pros. He has great normals, a great auto combo, and arguably the best reflect proof block strings in the whole game. He has fantastic corner damage. He converts most assists effortlessly with his massive jump L and 5M. He shuts down super dash in many situations from almost any position on the screen. And he has various options that let him react to neutral tools like beam assists and super dash. He also has lots of mix up options like fast overheads, left right options, a command grab, and all the universal stuff as well, such as Dragon Rush, 6M, and same side super dash. Although damage is low for some of these options, it makes him good at stealing turns and earning time to recover his assists. But what about his cons? He has actually terrible meter gain. With a small exception, he has no projectiles. He has no fast low options. He has low damage from several of his mix-up options. And he lacks sliding knockdowns from many of his common hits if he doesn't have assists available. Moving on, let's begin with his neutral. Overall, Hit has fantastic normals. His jump L directly competes with Piccolo's for best jump L in the game, although Hits has a better downward hitbox, giving him some extra peace of mind when throwing it out. Since he's unable to Gatling jump L into another jump L as a block string, confirm your air to airs with jump L into jump L plus M. On block, you cancel into jump M and can continue with another jump L. On hit, you'll get auto combo. His jump M is his best air to ground button, being fairly big and good for cross ups. His jump H isn't used much in neutral since it's a bit awkward and stalls his momentum, but sometimes that can be a good thing. His grounded normals are generally massive, 5M in particular reaches far, is fast for its size, and converts easily into combos or pressure. Its hurtbox is active before its hitbox, so it will get stuffed on startup if you aren't careful, so just don't treat this as a free turn anytime you think it will reach. It's excellent anytime you don't think there will be an active hitbox in its range and it makes swift punishing most things a breeze. It also has a very strong auto combo, with massive vertical hitboxes on the first two hits. 5L is short horizontally, but is great vertically. The second hit of his auto combo is the best of both worlds, going far and hitting surprisingly high. Be ready to convert airborne hits with a jump cancel, or risk whiffing the third hit of auto combo entirely. Instead of having key blasts, on the ground and in the air, Hit has a counter that has a few initial frames of vulnerability. They aren't very active, so they're generally best used when you can react to something that you know will make contact, such as projectiles and assists. Although losing access to traditional projectiles and key blasts is a huge trade-off, his counters are easily one of his biggest strengths. No other character can shut down super dash and hard tag as easily as he can in as many positions as he can. This might have been a big part of why Sonic Fox felt so confident with his character towards the end of Season 1, after Kazunoko jump-started the super dash plus assist meta. When successful, Hit's air counter immediately teleports him behind the opponent. This lets him punish Super Dash with a jump L starter from any angle. Although this can be used to react to many things, there are some things he probably shouldn't react to this way, such as GT Goku's assist. If the opponent is inside the beam when the counter activates, then Hit will teleport right into its path and probably get hit. Keep in mind that although Hit's ground counter gains in vulnerability after successfully countering something, he is still vulnerable if the actual hit misses the opponent. This means he can counter through a beam assist without getting hit by any of the remaining hits, but can still be whiff punished if the opponent positions himself above where he teleports to. Or they could simply stay on the ground and reversal with a DP or a level 3. Even though his counters don't completely shut down assist-based neutral, they can change the dynamic enough to give him an edge when some characters wouldn't have that at all. 
One small thing I'd like to point out is that if you ever land and get the ground counter instead of the air counter, it isn't fast enough to punish Super Dash outright. It is, however, plus on block in this situation, since airborne opponents are subjected to extra block stun. So if you ever recognize this situation ever come up, feel free to hit some buttons. Moving on to Hit's unique movement options. Hit's quarter circle forward to S is a useful command dash that can be canceled at any point into his light punch or medium stance. It's easily reactable as a cross up, but it can be paired with fast assists to make a faster, harder to react to cross up. His quarter circle back S is essentially a command back dash, which can be useful for creating space during pressure. This can be cancelled into his counter in any of his specials, but since his special attacks are locked behind stances, he can't back off and attack too quickly. Nonetheless, it's great to have as an option, and it occasionally sees some use setting up command grabs. Both hits 236S and 214S are projectile invincible, so they can be used on reaction to many assists to help him navigate through them in neutral. The list of options that hit has to react to neutral tools continues to get longer. Moving on to the stance. It's 236 L, M, and H put him in different stances that have different follow-ups, which are all useful in different situations. These stances are probably a big part of what seems confusing for many people and contributes towards people thinking he's tough to learn or lab against. But they're actually surprisingly simple. 236 L stance can be entered quickly and cancelled out of quickly, and as you could probably guess, this makes it useful for combos and pressure. If you hit light in this stance, he will use a fast, far-reaching jab, which can convert easily with an assist and is great for frame traps. Since it hits fairly high and converts the same way regardless of air or ground hit, it is often used in conjunction with an assist as a media option. If you hit medium instead, he uses a similar attack which is slightly slower, but more rewarding on hit. If you haven't used your smash yet, it will wall bounce near the corner and allow extensions without the use of an assist. Commonly, you'll see this used anytime a smash hasn't already been used in combos, and you'll see light used instead if your smash has been used. If you hit heavy in this stance, he'll do a fast launching kick which can lead into a combo afterwards. This isn't used too often from light stance, but it does have some advantages, like being fully invincible. This makes it useful if you ever find yourself in a light stance and see something that you want to safely react to, like a super dash or a projectile. Its medium stance is a lot of the same, but with a twist. The medium stance is blue, which is important to keep in mind if you're defending against hit. It has strike and projectile invincibility, but has a long period of startup, especially when compared to the light stance. The biggest difference is how his light follow-up is replaced with a projectile Rekka series with three hits. These track to the opponent's location and can be angled up, down, and horizontally. Keep in mind that the down projectile doubles as an overhead, but there are no low options, so that only really comes into play when the opponent has never seen it before. If you don't manually choose the directions, it will default to horizontal, up, and then down. These projectiles are excellent in combos, especially in the corner, allowing extensions that wouldn't be possible otherwise. If you can get the time to set them up, then they can be useful in neutral too, especially when used alongside projectile assists. But keep in mind that since these projectiles have reasonably long startup, they aren't the focus of his neutral. The medium follow-up in the medium stance is the same as the medium follow-up to the light stance, except this time it's a cross-up. This seems pretty solid, except the reward is generally pretty low, requiring a vanish to convert into a full combo. However, if you manage to hit the opponent into the corner, it will wall bounce and let you extend into a full combo meterlessly. For this reason, hit's left-right mix-up tends to be scarier near the corner. The EX follow-up is also a cross-up, and it's invincible too. It converts into a full combo on hit, which is awesome, and is noticeably faster than the medium follow-up. This attack's invincibility paired with the medium stance's invincibility makes it a great option for baiting sparking after a knockdown. And even if they don't spark, it still doubles as a decent mix-up. So should your opponent always block cross-up if they see the medium stance? Well, it isn't that simple. Remember that Hit has the same side option with his projectiles, and can even convert them in the corner by himself into a launcher. Left-right mix-up doesn't really matter if the opponent jumps away though, so you'll need to lock them down with an assist as you set up the stance. Then you can mix up between cross-up or same side projectiles. The main downside to all of this is how he usually will need meter to convert these options when he's mid-screen. Just to quickly recap for anyone that we lost along the way. Light stance. It looks normal and sets up same side frame traps. The medium stance. It looks blue, is slower, and somewhat invincible, and it sets up cross-ups. 
The EX stance is pretty much exactly the same as the blue stance, except it's invincible sooner, starting from frame 1. His EX stance being invincible right away makes it useful as a defensive option, but since the meterless follow-ups are vulnerable, you'll usually end up spending two bars to have a real reversal. One bar for the invincible EX stance, and one bar for the invincible EX kick. Keep in mind that although the EX stance and medium stance have invincibility, throws are an exception, so they can be caught by a meaty dragon rush. Next, let's move on to Hit's offense. Hit's 2L is a fast, unreactable overhead. It cannot combo on Hit, but it causes a scramble that he can take advantage of. Hitting someone with 2L is a great way to set up other mix-ups like Command Grab, Dragon Rush, Instant Air Dash, 2M, etc. Or simply just meaty afterwards with 5M. When you hit someone with 2L, it's almost like their brain is temporarily short-circuited, so be sure to take advantage of the confusion and mix up your options afterwards. Hit's 2M is a very slow, reactable low. It looks like an overhead at first glance, so many people who are unfamiliar with the matchup will stand up whenever they end up seeing it. Hit might be the king of reflect-proof block strings. Most of his standing normals will stay in even if the previous attack is reflected. Cancel anything into his auto combo, 5M, his 5H, or his light stance attacks to stay in and continue pressure without worrying about reflect. Although Hit's instant air dash jump M seems excellent, he lacks a complementary low option like an empty instant air dash 2L. His jump H helps supplement this, giving him a third overhead option with instant air dash jump M L H. On hit, it causes a fast knockdown that will cause a scramble in his favor. Since his low 2M is so slow, your opponent can option select blocking this by delaying when they switch from standing to low while defending. But keep in mind that hit is still plus even when this is blocked. Hit has a command grab as well. The light version hits close to him and is what you will see most of the time. The medium version only hits far away and is seen less often, but it still has a time and a place. These can be confirmed with an assist or vanish, and can be a solid way to KO a character who's at low health. EX grab does grant a combo on hit, but no matter what grab you use, you'll need to spend resources to confirm into a full combo. If you hold the button during his command grabs, then the area it reaches will travel slowly to extend its range. But so long as you're holding the button, it will not actually trigger and grab your opponent. So if you're wondering why your grabs aren't connecting, just remember to tap the button once and don't hold it. Its grabs are pretty easily reactable, and they shouldn't be your primary focus on offense. If you want to lower your risk a bit, try pairing them with an assist to keep your turn if your opponent jumps out on reaction. Some of you might have noticed by now that most of Hit's mix-up options don't convert for much damage. He has a lot of options though, but they don't all seem equally rewarding. This doesn't mean that they aren't useful though, there's a lot of value even in just tapping your opponent's dome with his 2L. This can be great for resetting pressure, granting time to get your assist back, and causing a scramble that's in Hit's favor, which will make any following mix-ups much more likely to work. Between Hit having fast overheads and other mix-up options to reset pressure, and reflect-proof strings to maintain that pressure, he can keep his turn for a fairly long time. Even just staggering normals and occasionally resetting pressure back to his lights is strong with him because the risk of getting frame trapped is so high. Hit's mix-up might be less rewarding than many other characters, but his frame traps can be far more rewarding than most. Hit wants you to challenge him, because his game plan and risk versus reward gets better when you do. For this reason, it's much better for you to learn a method of defending against him rather than constantly trying to fight your way out. If you're struggling to defend against Hit, there are two commonly used defensive strategies used by strong competitive players for you to consider trying. The first option, block high and react low. This is the opposite of what you're supposed to do in most matchups, but it makes sense here. Its highs are too fast to react to, so block standing by default. And its lows are reactable, so block low only on reaction. Sounds easy, right? With some practice, it might be, but it's still very risky. If you make a mistake and get hit by his 2M, it will hurt a lot. If your back is to the corner, expect to lose your character as a result of this one small mistake. The second option, block low by default and never block high, except for his 6M and instant air dash mix up. This sounds bad since you'll be getting smacked by 2L and maybe jump H, a lot. But remember that the damage you'll be taking isn't so bad. The important thing here is that you do actually still want to react to the 2Ls. You won't be able to react in time to block, but you will react in time to recognize the scramble that comes directly afterwards. 
This will make you prepared to react to the following mix-ups like Dragon Rush, It's Snare Dash, Command Grab, etc. Or to play proper rock, paper, scissors and scramble with Reflect, Up Tech, Back Dash, DP, etc. Whatever you want. If you aren't looking for 2L, it's very difficult to even tech the way that you want after the soft knockdown. This causes a lot of situations where you might get hit standing and say, I swear I up teched. Looking to react to getting hit by 2L lets you prevent this from happening. Just to recap, the two common options for defending are stand up and react low, and block low and react to getting hit by overheads. Whichever option gels more with you is fine. Optimally, the first option is best. But until you have enough experience with the character, it might be the riskier of the two. Moving on to hit supers. His 236 L plus M can be done in the air or on the ground, and DHCs easily into most other supers. It side switches after hitting, but if you DHC before it makes contact, then the cinematic won't play and you can keep the corner. This is the super you'll be getting when you DHC into hit. His 236 H plus S is the shotgun super. It dumps all of the meter the hit has and does more damage the more meter he has. This isn't used too often since usually it will be more efficient to use the same amount of meter DHCing into other characters. This is still excellent for burning through sparking regen though, and it's cool as hell. Hits level 3 burns through sparking regen excellently. It does above average damage and is a decent knockdown overall. Since hit can bait sparking while setting up a mix-up, it's generally considered a pretty good knockdown. Don't forget to use a variety of his mix-up tools, even the universal ones like 6M and Dragon Rush. The more options you're willing to use, the better each of them will be. Let's talk about the assist. Hit has a basic strike assist, there isn't really much to say about it honestly. It does what you expect, it's suitable for offense and combos, and what you see is generally what you get. It seems to have a bit of invincibility kicking in partway through the startup, but I don't see this coming into play in as many situations as it does for coolers or Team Gohan's assists. What about Team Synergy though? Hit loves beam assists, since they're excellent for his pressure and his combos, and they can somewhat fill the void left by his lack of projectiles. He can even extend with them mid-screen with a properly timed 5M, which grants him much higher return from them mid-screen than most other characters would have. He also particularly likes fast upward angled assists. He can convert these almost effortlessly with his massive jump L, set up sliding knockdowns that he sometimes lacks otherwise, and can set up fast cross-ups with his 2-3 success plus assist. Hit's assist being so simple prevents him from enabling unique synergies for other characters, but it's still perfectly usable. Its simplicity and flexibility makes it a welcome addition for many characters, even if it isn't flashy. If you found this video helpful and want to continue learning DBFC with me, then feel free to subscribe to the channel or catch me when I'm live over on Twitch. I'd like to thank OB Assassin for double checking the outline and script for this video. He's easily one of the best hit players in the world right now and actually inspired me to pick up the character in the first place, so please check him out. As always, I want these videos to be as helpful and credible as possible, so I really do appreciate the help. Thanks again. I'll be back with more soon. See you all next time.